Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for advanced English learners. You can download the PDF transcript of this and other stories on our Patreon page. You can find the link in the description below. Ready? Let's get started. C1, C2 English Story The Mill Girl Anna sighed. She was thinking about the next 12 hours of work she was about to do in the mill. Walking up the cobbled street, her clogs drumming a rhythm as she went, her frail body was already exhausted. Anna lived with her parents and six siblings. Only 12 years old, she was the eldest. She shared a bed with her two sisters in a tiny, overcrowded stone house. It was difficult to sleep as both her sisters snored and one had recurring nightmares. Anna was always weary what she would give for a good night's sleep. Due to the speed at which the Industrial Revolution progressed, housing was quickly erected for the mill workers. Often, families would all live and sleep together in one room. Anna was lucky. Her home had two bedrooms, one for the girls and one for the boys. Her parents slept downstairs in the main living area where their bed was curtained off in a corner during the day. In this room, a fire burned, not only for heat, but for hot water and cooking. A large pot containing broth would bubble over the flames for hours, ready for the evening meal. Anna's mother bought cheap cuts of meat and seasonal vegetables from the weekly market in the village, as they were poor. To the back of the house was the scullery, where the Monday wash was done. Clothes were soaked, boiled, rinsed, wrung out, mangled, dried and later in the week, ironed. This was laborious work. Anna helped with the chores at home after her shift at the mill, as her mother was often tired and weary to the bone. At only 35 years old, due to constant childbearing and poverty, she looked 20 years older. Anna vowed to herself that she would have a better life. As she continued along the street, a threadbare shawl around her shoulders to try and keep out the cold, Anna walked along with friends who also worked at the mill. They too lived in similar conditions to her, too worn out to talk. The only sound as they made their way to work was the clatter of the clogs, like a regiment on the march. There were thousands of girls in the textile industry and they were easily replaced. This was a constant threat. Anna's group hurried along because if they were late, a fine would be imposed and taken out of their wages. At least their foreman was not like some of the others who intentionally made sure that the factory clock was a few minutes fast in the morning enabling them to ruthlessly take money from the workers. The gatehouse was situated beside the main entrance. Employees passed here enabling them to be checked by their superiors. Raw materials and finished goods were also transported in and out of the site this way and were closely monitored and controlled. Anna and her friends passed through the gates thankfully without incident this morning, and headed towards the mill. In the workshop, it was oppressive and muggy. Due to the cotton dust, many suffered from occupational lung disease or cotton lung. Various jobs, including Anna's, necessitated working with huge pieces of moving machinery in which workers could easily become entangled. Many, including children, were dragged into the machinery, causing the recipient to lose fingers or limbs, and for some, 
the injuries sustained led to a tragic death. The hot, humid room where Anna toiled was overbearing. There was no ventilation as the heat was required to stop the thread on the machines from snapping. When she first started working, she felt as if the dust in the air was suffocating her. She suffered from symptoms such as sickness and headaches due to the contaminated atmosphere. As she entered the spinning room, Anna could barely see to the end of the place because it was so long. There were no windows, except the glass roof, where the summer sunlight poured in, making the room incredibly hot. Workers saw nothing of the outside world, so there was no distraction from their labour. Everywhere was covered in dust and grime, and Anna felt the little energy she had drained from her as she surveyed her surroundings. As if her work wasn't arduous enough, she would be fined for talking or having a little dirt on her machine. There seemed to be no end to the punishments, nothing to alleviate the drudgery. Some children had been beaten or doused in cold water to keep them awake during their shift. Anna thought that there must be more to life and was seriously considering looking for another job. She had heard that there was a position as a scullery maid at Bow Edge, a stately home on the outskirts of the village. Anna decided that she would walk there on Sunday afternoon to make enquiries. Suddenly, she felt a slap across her face. Anna's foreman, Mr Shaw, glared at her and said she was lucky not to receive a worse punishment for daydreaming during working hours. Mortified and humiliated, Anna's resolve to find other employment was strengthened. She'd had enough of being bullied. Standing in front of her machine, she pledged that work at the mill would only be for a few more days. Anna tendered a multi-spindle spinning frame, meaning she was responsible for 288 strands of thread at a time. She never sat down and was constantly in motion, pacing back and forth in front of her machine, watching each strand. Her health was deteriorating due to the inhalation of loose cotton fibre being breathed in throughout her shift. Anna didn't feel like a real person in the mill. She was not greeted or acknowledged, except to be punished. She was not considered to have feelings and was always at the mercy of the foreman's moods. It was only at the end of the day, when she was walking home with her friends, that she felt like a girl again. The day came, at last, the weather crisp and clear, when she was walking towards Bow Edge. She hoped that the job of scullery maid was still available. An imposing building soon came into view. This could be Anna's new beginning, away from the hostility of the mill. She took the side path which led to the back of the mansion where the kitchen, tradesmen and servants' entrance would be located. She knocked on the heavy oak door, her heart pounding, aware of the importance of this meeting. Anna was shown into a warm, spotless kitchen by a girl of similar age. Shouting orders across the room was a plump, middle-aged woman with a ruddy complexion. She wore a black dress, white apron and cap. This must be the cook head of the kitchen staff. She appeared firm but kind, and as she crossed the room, a smile of approving lighting up her face, Anna knew her future was assured. Let's go through some of the advanced vocabulary from this story. Drained. Drained. 
To be drained is to feel as though you have no mental or physical energy left. Frail. To be frail. To be frail is to be physically weak and not very healthy. Glare. To glare. To glare is to look in a very angry way. Recurring. Recurring. If something is recurring, then it keeps happening. Sustain. To sustain. To sustain is to experience loss or injury. Thread. Thread. A thread is a length of very thin fibre. Vow. To vow. To vow is to promise you will do something. Weary. Weary. To be weary is to be very tired, especially after working. Alleviate. To alleviate. To alleviate is to make something bad less severe. Drudgery. Drudgery. Drudgery is something that is boring and usually unpleasant work that you have to do. Oppressive. Oppressive. Oppressive means uncomfortable, cruel and unfair. Suffocating. Suffocating. If something is suffocating you, it makes you feel hot and usually unable to breathe. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story and the vocabulary explanations. Get productive and check out our language learning productivity packs on Etsy. Use code YouTube10 for 10% off. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. See you soon.